county and you want to drive, just remember to go 55. Cause all around the county every woman and man knows we'll pull you over just to play our banjos. Before you cross the street you better look both ways Or we'll throw you in the pokey for a dozen days And all around the county every woman and man knows We'll pull you over just to play our banjos Cops with banjos Cops with banjos We're gonna pull you over uh, this is uh, this matter with Mr. Mueller, and I'm, uh, he will be continuing representation uh, on his own. I've asked uh, to get him that I would be available for standby counsel. And I have uh, all, of the, uh, all of the necessary paperwork here, right? And documents to him. My, my recollection is not Right. I, but it, I told him that I would be available uh, to him for uh, any questions in this state by council. All right. Well, in as much as uh, you, uh, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Mr. Miller, you're proceeding on your own at this point, though? Yes. Correct? That would be my wish. All right. And you understand that you have the right to be represented by an attorney if you cannot afford one. The court would appoint counsel to represent you. Do you understand that? Yeah, I think uh, whenever the state or whoever's representing such, I'd like to make an apology. I'd be happy with that and just proceeding on with my life. I don't feel I've harmed anybody who's been a victim here. So you do understand that you can be appointed an attorney if you cannot afford one, correct? Yeah, I understand that. All right. <coughs> you understand that uh, these matters will eventually go to trial, and at that point you may need the assistance of an attorney for the purposes of handling a jury, addressing a jury, making arguments to a jury, that sort of thing that uh, an attorney with years of experience uh, would be able to assist you with that, whereas you may not have that experience yourself, you might be at a disadvantage. Do you understand that? I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I don't understand how it years of experience or something to understand that I didn't harm anybody, especially when the incident's on video, and you, I mean, then you and yourself could view such footage and, you know, somebody could stop the injustice that's being done to me. I mean, this is three trips here to Greenfield where I'm not from. It's a burden on my life. It's an expense that I can't afford, uh, including representation. And you know, nobody was harmed, and there was no victim in this crime. So All right. I can't see how it would get that far. Well, Mr. Mueller, um, in this particular case, this case is on today for a motion to join with uh, Mr. Iyer. Um, and uh, the court will, uh, in your case, uh, appoint standby counsel. Mr. Flynn and I took the opportunity to contact um, the bar advocate uh, director to secure um, standby counsel. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to talk to him, but... No, I haven't yet. No. All right. Um, well, at this point... Um, I'm, I'll be objecting to the motion to join as well as I filed a motion to dismiss. We're going to get to that one then, okay? All right. So, Mr. Flynn, you're in a position to, to act as standby counsel? I do. Well... At this particular point in time, the uh, if you could if you could stand back for a moment, Mr. Fund. Sure. Mr. Miller, the court is going to appoint standby counsel. As much as you, you had an opportunity to have Mr. Flynn represent you and declined to have him represent you. The court's going to Well that's not entirely true. I was told by uh, Mr. Flynn that there is a conflict between his other proceedings here and Mm -hmm. uh, his ability to make a personal agreement with me. So that's not entirely true in my understanding. And he was told he could not represent me by the state. All right, well, the court's going to appoint standby counsel in this particular case. But I, I just wanted for the record, I didn't decline. So I, was, I, I wasn't able to make an agreement. Well, you've raised, you raised the issue of a conflict. That's one matter. The court's going to appoint attorney Bray to represent the standby counsel in this particular case. <coughs> He will be available for the jury trial when that uh, occurs. He'll be provided discovery by the Commonwealth at some point in time, so that he'll have all the materials. Uh, Mr. Bray, do you know of any conflict that you may have in Mr. Miller's case? No, Your Honor. I briefly looked at the police report yesterday. It's in the clerk's file, and I didn't see it. Okay. Very well. 
Mr. Mr. Bray will be appointed standby counsel. We will address the motion that you filed in the case later today, as well as the Commonwealth's motion to join. That will be addressed. I mean, I'm, I'm saying to you for the record that I'm not asking for standby counsel at all either. So and the court's, done without my the court's going to sign. note that you don't wish to have standby counsel. Nevertheless, the court will have standby counsel for you and then if you need it at any time during the jury trial, at any time during the feed proceedings. Peter Iyer. Mr. Iyer, you're, you're a uh, co-defendant in this particular case. You've indicated you want to represent yourself. Is that true? Yeah, well, my first indication is that I'd like to see who the victim is and why we're being charged while we're still going through this process. Well, at this point in time, though, you're representing yourself. The court's going to appoint standby counsel for you as well because these matters will be eventually marked for trial. The court will find attorney Byron Capus behind you. Well, I object to that because it makes me feel like I'm at a ward of the state. You guys have the ability to assign whoever you want to serve to, you know, uh, be my counsel. So I, I strongly object to that. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, let me say to you, sir, also that jury trial is a complicated matter. Uh, Mr. Capus has years of experience handling those types of matters and that uh, we may need the assistance of an attorney at some point in time. And at this point, you are representing yourself. Mr. Capus will stand by a position ready to help you if you should need that help. I will note for the record your objection. Yeah, and I've clarified I, I, I'm presenting myself, not representing myself. I'm not, uh, I don't succumb to y'all's authority. I don't. I think the issue at hand, you know, rather than try to figure out who's representing who or proceeding is to, I would again ask for the record who the victim is and, and where the harm has been done. And if that's not able to be shown, uh, I would ask that these charges be dismissed immediately. Well, that may be a question for the jury trial. You file a motion to dismiss the complaint, the court will hear that in a moment. Okay? All right. You can take a seat there. We're going to hear the motion for joining at this point. Mr. Chair, I did file a motion for joining her during that essential facts of the case for the individuals who were arrested at the Franklin County Jail on the same day in question. There are similar charges of the wiretap that were just discussed. And the municipal workers' violations. Uh, Mr. Ayer, there's also some charges with the work on the motor vehicle, uh, which is what we have agreed to as well. But given the fact that uh, there were those three sheriff's department uh, workers as well as at least three police officers who were sent just to help testify, it's in the interest of justice that the case be joined in the judicial economy uh, with the required judge as well. All right. <coughs> okay. Mr. Miller, what would you like to say? I would object to uh, joining the trials. Uh, one of the reasons state claims is to be a, a financial ease for them, and I don't think the state has any concern of my financial state, and they've made me come here numerous times. Um, one, not to mention that there are different charges, and I think, I can't be 100% certain, but our defenses might be uh, different, and I think it would harm myself to be forced uh, like everything else in this proceeding, or taking a joint trial. How would your how would the uh, facts be different on your defense conflict with, with uh, Mr. Iyer? Well, I, I have to believe that would be a matter for trial, right? Would I want to state that now with the people who are trying to accuse me of wrongdoing in the present? Well, I mean, would that tip off my hat to a defense? It's up to you what you say. You're representing yourself here. I'm asking you if there's a difference if, there, if you have a defense which conflicts. I'm saying that by answering such question, I feel that I would give the defense uh, information that isn't relevant or isn't needed at this time. But I would stress that it, it is a very good possibility that I might try to defend myself differently than some others who are also wrongfully accused in my mind. Okay. Mr. Iyer, what would you like to say? Uh, I too would object. This was an issue that I've been raising for months. Um, when we initially were arrested July 1st, <coughs> Uh, for whatever reason, uh, he was, uh, my friend was given a card that said he had pre-trial next, and I, mine had a, a scribbled in box that said continue, and I asked 
you know, why that was. I was never given an answer. The next round, he was at trial, I was at pre-trial. So for whatever reason, we've always been at different stages, and I've never gotten an answer from anybody at the court. And if someone would like to give an answer now, I'd appreciate it. But uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, I don't, uh, I object for, for multiple reasons. Uh, this motion says there was uh, criminal conduct, and again, I'd like the court on the record to explain to me who the victim is and who, who's actually been harmed. If, if that can't be shown, then I don't know why these charges still stand. Um, so that's that's my big thing. I mean, and again, we're different people. We don't know what, I've been asking for um, clarification from, from people associated with this process as to just the official policy of these proceedings and have yet to have any of my questions answered. So it's difficult for me to say that our legal strategies will be the same or different. I assume they'll be different because we're different individuals. And I have, uh, in addition, I have two more charges, another felony and another misdemeanor charge from an illegal search when Todd and Dodd and his men went inside my home and broke inside my vehicle and took my property. So those are all issues I feel like I'm the victim and that they should be charged. I don't feel like we have, again, I would, I would like the court to stay on the record uh, who, who the victim is and how they've been harmed. Thank you. Right. Cowell's motion to join. Wow. Okay. For the record, again, I object to joining trials. I think it might hamper my ability to have a fair trial. And it begins my, I will again, just for the record, say I'm being forced into that decision as everything else is proceeding. I have a motion to reject. I already have one to reject the motion. All right, now. You each have filed motions to dismiss, strike or dismiss the complaint. Would you like to be heard on that? Sure. All right. Mr. Mueller. <coughs> on the state in the motion, uh, again, it goes with cause of that there is no victim. Uh, corpus delecti, which is showing a body of a crime, isn't relevant. Uh, the person <coughs> who they're claiming as, as a victim would be Todd and Dodge, and yet, as some of the points make, I don't think he can prove uh, injury or loss or any criminal conduct deemed by that. And uh, there's also mentions of uh, lack of jurisdiction. Because of, of corpus delecti, there is no crime. Um, and that the state has failed to prove any of this in any of the proceedings that I've been forced to come to. And therefore, like I said, if there is, if there is no victim and there is no body of crime and no person can prove that there was injury or loss due to my actions, then, um, I don't feel that there's any merit uh, in that accused charges facing me. For that, I had my property returned and the, the charge was dismissed. Okay. All right. Mr. Yeah, I would echo what my uh, friend uh, Mr. Miller said, or Adam said. Um, there is no, I mean, you guys can see the motion and the facts to the, the clerk's office and Todd M. Dodge and also to the DA, so I assume you guys have had time to read it. And, you know, it, it asks, you guys to uh, answer these questions. Who is the victim? Where is the offense? And and if you're not able to show that, which I don't believe you will be able to, then to dismiss these charges, you know, we should be free to go. And so I guess I'd like to hear um, your guys' reaction to this and um, hopefully acknowledgement that there is no, we did not commit a crime that day and there is no victim and that these charges should not stay. Thank you. Mr. Banks? Yeah, uh, I would <coughs> make the motion, I guess, is somewhat of a motion to dismiss the lack of probable cause. That we know there are no affidavits that file uh, denied for that reason, <coughs> as required by the rules. They are not known themselves. They are still not the same level of attorneys. The amount of claims to deny based on that is denied based on the review of the police report, but our CS does set forth the probable cause for the crimes charged and uh, proof beyond that would be a trial issue, not a motion. You wish to be heard further on that? Yes, if I could. Yes. I'd like to just add that um, obviously there's police reports that have been filed by Todd and Dodge and some of his colleagues, and there's our version of, of what happened as well. But you guys have had in your possession since July the video footage of what happened, and you have yet to see that. And if you guys, I, I hope you've watched that uh, since you're uh, charging us with these things, but um, I think that is 
you know, incontestable evidence and proof uh, that we did not harm anybody that day, and that there was no law broken, uh, that Todd and Dodge, the arresting officer, who claimed to be the victim, can't prove that he's a victim of it. So I would encourage you, to, if you haven't already, to watch the video and take that into consideration as well. Thank you. I'll take the matter under advisement. Now, Mr. Miller, you file a motion on behalf, I believe, do not to uh, motion to, to uh, have the police department release camera footage, among other things? Okay. Uh, I did that, yes, a while ago. All right. You don't see that that was ever active? It was not. All right. Do you wish to be heard on that? I do. I mean, I'll hear you. For, I don't know how, since July, um, the police department has been holding my property under the presumption of evidence, but I feel that like there's no merit to that, considering the actual cameras themselves aren't evidence, that the footage can arguably be considered evidence of if that's what the owner is going to say, I still think it's all my property should be returned to me. And that there's no reason that the lack of property needs to be holding my property any longer, especially how it affects my livelihood. So I'd like it and as well as put it, which is my property, to be returned immediately. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I don't think we ever actually have a copy of that motion. But from what I know of the case, I can certainly comment on the opinions and what steps they think of the camera at this point. I'm not sure I'm going to make a search warrant before they actually put in the first model that they have. I'm going to check to see what the status is. I would object for that, but it wouldn't be a matter of the search warrant they've had it for nine months. I mean, they've had plenty of time to obtain a search warrant if there was something interesting to them. And like I said, I'm the one being put at harm by having my property be maintained. And they obviously know the rules of, of whatever procedures they need, and it's not my fault that the DA or the police officers haven't taken the time to do the things that would like to leave my property today. Okay. Well, this is one of the problems that's created when you represent yourself. The motion in order to be heard is supposed to be served upon the common law, so they have noticed what it is that you want to ask the court. And that didn't happen in this case. So it, it has happened. I, again, I'm representing myself only by force. I'm forced to be here, otherwise men with guns will come and for, bring me here. Um, so my wish is to not have that men with guns chasing me not around. So I'm representing myself, but I'm not saying that I know all the rules here. I mean, like you said, there's, there, are, there are, you said there are years of experience or schooling that these gentlemen have to go through in order to partake in this uh, um, setting. But I have done other things uh, as far as emailing them to people at the police station, calling them, as well as the state, um, represented by the gentleman on the left, and uh, none of them have answered any calls. I filed several motions, some that have gone just to hear, some that have gone to his office. Most of them are kicked back because I don't know these so-called procedures, um, which I'm not even uh, agreeing to advocate under. I'm merely trying to gain back my property in a responsible uh, civil manner but by calling, emailing, and faxing people things, requesting my party back, which I think is extremely nice of me considering it's been stolen and held against my wishes for the last nine months. Mr. Bankston, uh, how long is intending to use any of this material? <clears throat> you are know, certainly the necklace, uh, if he has that return, uh, went to the station to return or to get property back, I'm sure would be returned to him. Um, I guess if they haven't gone there, that's objection. That's false, and he's speculating because I have. I went back to the police station the, the day after my family and Todd and Dodge himself told me that he was, he laughed and then told me how he was going to keep my stuff. And that was funny, including my cell phone, which was back, which has been an inconvenience for me since then as well. I changed phone numbers, get new phones, lost contacts with business relationships, all sorts of things. So I mean, I, I wish my stuff would be returned to me today. All right. Well. Mr. Bankston, um, would you like an opportunity to look into this matter? Certainly. Sure. All right. All right. We can we can either continue this for an additional date. You can come back, Mr. Banks. You can have an opportunity to 
to inquire about this. Uh, and uh, you can perhaps get the property back today. I can't promise you that. I don't know. Uh, if you come back another day, however, you may have an opportunity to look into this and, and uh, direct them to return it. But again, I'm going to object for the fact that they've had ample opportunity to do what they want with this, to have a search warrant, to do those things. I mean, how long am I allowed to be burdened by the state's inefficiency? I mean, it's not its not something, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't, you know, even for argumental sake and things I don't agree with, they could have long ago copied that footage and given my physical property back. The, the negligence or uh, laziness of the state should be, I, I shouldn't be punished for this. And at least if, if the court is going to do such a thing against my will, uh, institute a time frame, I mean, 24 hours or something. You know, I don't need 5 o'clock, you know, 2 a.m., 2 p.m. I mean, they should, they should be put, there should be an expi expiration of time. They shouldn't get the benefit of the doubt because they're associated with uh, people joining your world. Thanks. All right. So there's no, none of this is evidence as far as you can see. The camera has to There's footage on the cameras as well. You're saying the comments, that's, that's their application. I don't believe anybody's looked at any footage on the cameras. Is the state saying they want my cameras? Does that mean I can go into my camera and get my footage? Well, the camera is evidence. The criminal is saying. So all property except the camera may be returned. Right, two cameras. trial date. We have July 18th and 19th available for this trial. So those will be, we will have this trial start on the morning of July 18th. Okay. All right. That couldn't be a jury trial? It's a jury trial. Okay. Are making sure? Yes. The defense had asked for a bench trial previously. Well, you can, you can ask for a bench trial. I, I was in the state head, and I don't. I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah, the well, today. You each have a constitutional right to a jury trial. Mm -hmm. and unless you take the affirmative step of actually waiving that right, you retain that right, and it will be a jury trial. Well, I think you also have a right to free speech and to, to court public officials, <laughs> but uh, we're still going through this mess. I mean, if that constitutional rights, you can just end this today. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, we can't end this today. But uh, the trial date will be July 18th. So you can get a card from the court officer. That'll be when you be back. Um, and you should consider talking to your standby counsel for three days today. Is there a time frame on when the motion will be heard for the system? I've taken it under advisement. Uh, we can have an interim date if you'd like to go back to court, or you can be notified by the time. Um, it would be, the decision will be made within 30 days. Or is there a way to call the court to do yes, that? Okay. This program is brought to you by Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. 
Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters. 